Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're finally gonna talk about oil again. My original video was criticized by one camp in particular and written off as hysteria by others, and so it needs a follow-up on many levels. I believe that a lot of the negative responses that I got were largely denial that was driven by personal preferences, ahem fries, and or the natural human instinct to defend dense calorie sources, and a lot of it was defended by misapplied data that was on standard American populations. And that's just not relevant to vegan health. And so we're gonna look at why oils are still not a health food for vegans. We're gonna look at particular oils and their health effects. And finally, we're gonna talk about options for adapting to this information in real life, in practical terms. My original video was meant to, at the very least, just demonstrate that oil is not the health food that it is commonly touted as. It was also just meant to show that oil is ubiquitously, arbitrarily thrown into foods, and finally, that it's not good for your arteries. And we're gonna go into more science about cardiovascular disease and oil, but first I wanna talk a little bit about the vegan advocacy aspect. One of the main concerns about me saying that oil is not a health food is that it would make it harder for people to go vegan. It's a one more food that they would have to remove. First of all, I don't think people would have been so angry if I was just highlighting the negative effects of refined sugar for some reason. Second and most importantly, veganism in no way is defined by whether or not you eat oil, whether it's low oil or no oil. Simply put, veganism is not no oilism, which also kind of sounds like an Australian guy saying nihilism. And this brings us to the obvious conclusion that when you're first going vegan, you first worry about ditching animal products. And then if you're comfortable, you can ditch oil. Unless of course you're going vegan so that you can reverse heart disease under Esselstyn's program or something like that. And another point that I've mentioned several times in other videos that my detractors, I don't think will ever forward on to their isolated audience. Oh, some shade. I'm just gonna throw some shade, right? And that point is that you can choose your own health adventure. You can choose the scale of processed foods that you wanna be eating. A scale might look a bit like this. First, you have the whole foods or no oil where you're trying to reverse the disease or very serious about preventing disease. And then we got mostly whole foods or low oil, which would give you, you know, medium prevention. And then we've got a sort of standard vegan, which gives you the standard vegan benefits. And then finally, we have, I don't give an F, or I convinced myself that oil is a health food and I don't wanna change my habits. Or also, I think I eat a lot of whole foods, but I constantly eat processed foods and rewrite my memory. You know who you are. And you gotta think every level of this chart is falling back onto the next level. So somebody who doesn't eat oil might end up eating a little bit of oil, a little bit of oil, more oil. You know, but somebody who openly includes oil in their diet is gonna fall back onto deeply fried foods or snorting lines of oil from leaky car Cars in an alleyway, you never know. All right, enough defending myself, let's actually get into the properties of oil. One comment that I got a surprising amount on my first video was, but we require oil, we need oil as humans to survive and that is just absolutely not true. The answer to this can easily be gleaned by a brief history of oil consumption. Extracted oil, or this, which we eat nowadays all the time, was not a part of our pre-civilization diet. It was not eaten for about 99.9% .9 of our evolutionary history in which we stood on two feet. You know, we've got Australopithecus, our bipedal ancestor from about 4 million years ago, no oil, all the way up to when we first became Homo sapiens about 200,000 years ago, no oil for thousands and tens of thousands of years, until about five or 6,000 years ago when we started squeezing olive oil in the Bronze Age, according to this paper in the Journal of Horticulture Science. And in that point in time, it was a luxury. It was not widely available until, of course, we hit the industrial era, and now we can eat as much of it as we want. And so no oil is not not required, just like how cow's milk is not required. And no, not eating oil does not mean that you don't eat fat, and I'm not trying to push a super low fat diet or anything here. And I did get a lot of comments about, what about healthy fats? That's why we need oil. There are so many sources of whole plant fat, like nuts and seeds. Avocados are a source of healthy fat. Avocados are not oil. What? But I thought I was oil. Get out of here, kid. Now I wanna cover a topic that I largely left out in my first video, and that is the danger of high omega-6 consumption, which is especially a weak point on a processed or standard vegan diet. 
And in terms of an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio from this study, it appears that we evolved at around a one-to-one -one ratio, but our current Western diet is around 15 to one. And the majority of oils out there are high omega-6, low omega-3 oils, and a high ratio like that promotes the pathogenesis of many diseases, including cardiovascular disease, cancer, and inflammatory and autoimmune diseases, whereas a higher omega-3 amount exerts suppressive effects on those diseases. So if you're a vegan who makes the mistake of replacing animal fats with high omega-6 oils, you could get a ratio upwards of 50 to one. I went ahead and did about a half a day of eating on chronometer. You know, maybe you have a Boca burger, you're even healthy, you got some rice and some zucchini, but then you go ahead and have a bunch of sweet potato fries with safflower oil. This, my friends, is a 70 to one omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, majorly inflammatory. You might be wondering why high omega-6 is actually bad. Well, put in simple terms from this study, eating a lot of omega-6s eventually leads to metabolic byproducts that are toxic, which can lead to artery buildup and blood clots that cause heart attacks, and interestingly, allergies as well as other inflammatory disorders. Our body simply isn't adapted to having that many omega-6s in the system. This relationship for vegans is discussed at length in this really old school Dr. Greger video that I'll link below. Speaking of Dr. Greger, he recommends recommends that as a part of his daily dozen food checklist that you eat two tablespoons of ground flax every day to keep your omega-3s up. And let me know down below if you want me to do a what I eat in a day daily dozen video. And a side note, looking at coconut oil, coconut oil doesn't have omegas, but it is 90% saturated fat. And as I mentioned in the first video, there are studies showing that it raises your LDL or bad cholesterol. Now, what about an oil like canola oil that has a better omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, which leads us to the question, are all oils bad? Let's keep going with canola oil. If you're looking at junkier foods, much of the canola oil in them is partially hydrogenated, which means that it contains trans fat, which is horrible for you. It can be up to 40% trans fat. And as studies like this show, trans fat raises LDL cholesterol, again, bad cholesterol. And from this study, trans fat's ability to clog arteries is considered a causal relationship, and you know how serious that word is. And as this Harvard article mentions, if there is less than 0.5 grams of trans fat per serving, they can say there is zero trans fat. So you can take a product like Pam or those spray on oils, put a really low serving size on there so that one little spray doesn't have 0.5 grams of trans fat, but then people load it on there and load the trans fat on. But for most people who are concerned about health and not buying these products, they probably don't need to worry about partially hydrogenated canola oil. It is more likely that they'll get trans fat from normal canola oil. This trans fat is formed during processing where they also bleach the oil and back to that Harvard article, it can be around two to 4% trans fat. And from this WHO document, many European countries have created trans fat bans, which aren't technically bans, they're just keeping the trans fat level under two grams per 100 grams of oil. So in other words, any oil over 2% trans fat would be over the limit. And again, we have up to 4%, so four grams of trans fat, which isn't a ton in a single amount, but imagine if you're making canola oil the staple of your diet because it has the better omega-3 ratio and then you're consuming trans fat every day. Okay, let's move on. We're not completely done with canola oil, but I want to take a look at olive oil because so many people in the comments were like, what about extra virgin olive oil? Starry eyes. Remember in the original video where people were given olive oil and it lowered their flow mediated dilation, it paralyzed their arteries? That was done with extra virgin olive oil. And many people will say, but what about those extra antioxidants that are in the extra virgin olive oil? Nope. First of all, from this study of antioxidants in foods, olives don't have that much antioxidant power to begin with. And from this study, quote, the content of olive oil phenols with antioxidant potential in the Mediterranean diet is probably too low to produce a measurable effect on LDL oxidizability or other oxidation markers in humans. Does not help to an important extent, in other words. Yeah, eat some blueberries. And another one I heard a lot is that, oh, the consensus is that olive oil is healthy for your arteries. And what about this meta-analysis showing how good olive oil was for your arteries? Way better than your stupid little clinical trials. First off, here is another newer trial on olive oil showing that yes, it did lead to the same artery paralysis or as they described, acute detrimental effect on endothelial function. So not just one trial. 
Most important that olive oil is healthy meta-analysis was done by looking at studies that took people who ate animal fat and put them on olive oil and measured an improvement. It's back to the same point, animal fats are the worst and then oils are below that. Just like how this study showed that coconut oil was healthier than butter in clinical trials, but it still raised LDL from the baseline. These videos are talking in the context of what is healthier for a vegan population, not a standard American diet population, because obviously barraging your arteries with olive oil is gonna be better than barraging your arteries with animal fat. Again, you can just go standard American vegan and potentially lower your heart disease mortality by 25% according to this study, others probably show more, or you can virtually eliminate your risk of having heart attack or stroke as was shown by Dr. Esselstyn's clinical trials eating a whole food vegan oil-free diet. When looking at artery damage here when comparing oil and animal fat, it's kind of like this really ridiculous analogy of more gunshots is more lethal than less gunshots, but less gunshots could still kill you. Have you tried like the less gunshots diet? And since I'm a mere master's in public health candidate, I'm gonna let an expert say something on this subject. From Roseanne Oliveira, PhD and founding director of UC Davis's Integrative Medicine. Quote, when comparing baseline with one year follow-up angiograms or heart scans in people with coronary heart disease, saturated animal fat, monounsaturated olive oil, and polyunsaturated fats were all associated with significant increase in new atherosclerotic lesions. She goes on to say that causing less damage is a far cry from promoting heart health as so many people believe is the case with olive oil. And in the US, we have what are called qualified health claims or health claims that are legal to make on a product. And in the case of olive oil, it sums up this position pretty well. That limited and not conclusive scientific evidence suggests that you can eat some olive oil to reduce heart disease risk, but it has to replace saturated fat to work. In other words, consensus is not that olive oil is just a healthy food in all conditions, it's that it is healthier than animal fat. You could not make the claim that adding olive oil to a low saturated fat vegan diet would decrease heart disease risk. It is not a health food. By the way, the same qualified claim exists for canola oil. You must replace saturated fat with it. And furthermore, this is a claim that could be made for virtually any food without saturated fat. Heck, you could replace saturated fat with shredded paper and lower your heart disease risk. Get shredded with the shredded paper diet. Side effects may include paper cuts. So these oils are a great step in the right direction away from animal fat, but it stops there. It appears that all oil can lead to postprandial hyperlipidemia or after meal fatty blood, AKA sludge blood. This is merely the transport of highly concentrated fat that has been removed from its fiber. From this study, postprandial hyperlipidemia is considered atherogenic, and we see a correlation between postprandial lipidemia and artery buildup. And from this study, these triglycerides can penetrate and be deposited into your artery wall, which leads to a nasty inflammatory reaction and eventually the oxidative stress that leads to heart disease. I cover this in higher detail in my high cholesterol doesn't cause heart disease debunked video, which yes, does look like the ending to Looney Tunes. Now here's a study that I didn't show in my first video that looked at both canola oil and olive oil. And keeping in mind from that other study, postprandial lipemia is characterized by a rise in triglyceride-rich lipoproteins after eating. Switching back again, here are the triglycerides over the course of a day while eating olive oil. And here is canola oil. Big humps, lovely oil humps. And way back to that newer study on olive oil and artery function, they found a postprandial increase in triglycerides, which was independent of the type of oil ingested. Now there's no reason to believe that avocado oil or flax oil or whatever random obscure not well studied oil that you can name will not do this. It probably will. Furthermore, hyperlipidemia is associated with a lowering in oxygen content and also destroys the natural repelling force between your blood cells and forces them to stack like quarters, which all increases the amount of force needed to pump your blood, which is definitely really bad for anybody 
with any scale of heart disease, and that is also why we see it coincide with angina or heart pains. This whole thing actually touches into the realm of acne. As I mentioned in my first oil video, when I went oil-free, that was the first time in my adult life that I could say that my skin was clear, that I did not have noticeable acne. And as I mentioned in my acne video, sebum, the oil that is excreted on your face, is largely made up of triglycerides. And looking to studies, we can see that people who suffer from acne excrete more triglycerides than those who don't have acne. So it's possible that postprandial lipemia can act as a sort of acne bomb. Now, moving on, another point that definitely bears repeating is that when it comes to oil, there is no better fat gain food on the planet. It is nine calories per gram. There's no denser food. If I were to just throw out a conjecture, I would guess that virtually all cases of very overweight or obese vegans are as a result of oil consumption. I would also say is the main reason that obese people may not lose very much weight when they go vegan if they are pounding down the oil. And yeah, obesity is not a super common issue on a vegan diet, but it still exists. And need I remind you that from the CDC, obesity and overweightness is linked with 13 types of cancer that make up 40% of cancers. Okay, now I wanna talk about how this might affect one's life on a daily basis and some strategies and things like that. And a question I get a lot is, what if you have to eat some oil? What if you're traveling or something like that? Looking back to Vogel's study, we could see that you can reduce that artery impairment by about 50% by pairing that oil with a salad, for example. Obviously, there are still the other negative effects of oils, and you don't know what the omega ratio is, but if somehow magically you can choose, canola oil would theoretically be better. And another question I get a lot is, what about a little bit of oil? Wouldn't that be okay? And Jeff Novick has a pretty good presentation on this, talking about how little oil becomes a lot of oil very quickly just because of the calorie density. And then there's the idea of breaking the dam, just like how eating a little bit of animal products is a bad idea, because once you let it into your diet, it becomes a part of your diet. And once again, though, it's choose your own health adventure. It's whatever amount you want to eat, you can eat. I just want you to be aware of the data. Now for the last thing I want to talk about, which I think is really interesting, and that is the sheer negative response I got from a lot of people just by presenting some negative aspects of oil. And I thought about this, and I think there might be a connection to a point I made in the past about telling people to give up animal products, how they can have an instinctual reaction against it just because you are telling an animal, in this case a human animal, to give up a dense source of calories, and there is no denser source of calories than oil. You know, we have millions of years of evolutionary wiring telling us to seek and eat the densest source of calories. And then you have this random dude on YouTube jabbering about how you should give up your densest source of calories. That's definitely gonna wake the monkey in you. And a lot of people are just like, Mike, you suck. Why do you wanna take these foods away from me? And it's not that I'm enjoying masochistically removing these foods from your diet. No, this is just, again, what the data show and also what possibly the most effective reverser of heart disease on earth right now, Dr. Esselstyn recommends. And when deciding how much oil to include in your diet, I kind of like to think of it this way. When you're going vegan and not giving up processed foods like oil, it's kind of like somebody is handing you a lottery ticket and you decide to not turn it in because of the effort of turning it in. And from a hypothetical premise, you could kind of think of it this way. When comparing someone on a standard American diet to a standard vegan diet, it would be like instead of getting a heart attack at like 53, it'd be getting a heart attack at 65. Yeah, that's 12 extra years of being heart attack free, but why stop there when you can potentially become heart attack proof or nearly heart attack proof? Why? In conclusion, there are different negative effects of different oils. Coconut oil, for example, will raise your LDL, while others may not. You have the high omega-6 oils, which can lead to bad toxic byproducts that can damage your arteries and cause inflammation. We have olive oil and other oils that can lead to artery paralysis, but all oils appear to cause that postprandial lipemia. The high triglycerides after eating, which can lead to a buildup in your arteries, and all of them are also the worst thing you can eat in terms of body fat. There is no magic oil that won't cause sludge blood. The antioxidants in olive oil won't save you. Oil is still the vegan killer. Heart disease is the leading cause of death among vegans still. Yeah, it's less, but the data show that we can prevent and reverse it with an oil-free whole food vegan diet. I mean, I don't know what else you want me to tell you. I don't know what I'm going to tell you.
And finally, after the results of your request after the first video, I did make an oil-free cooking video, so you can check that out. And I also made an oil-free cookbook, which is an ebook and will be linked below. Finally, if you have any good scientific evidence that any of my claims in this video were not accurate, there is some magical oil, which is great for you in every single possible way. Feel free to share that down below. All right, that's it for today. Like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.